Hey guys, Suetonia here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Vengeance, which is the Lamar Assault Frigate, which is specialised towards missiles and particularly rockets. Uh, the Vengeance is uh, really tanky too, it has a bonus to armour resistances as well as ship recharge rate. So it's a ship that is actually pretty strong active tanking. It doesn't quite have the same burst tank as the Hawk, but it has uh, a lot more sustain than the Hawk in theory. But I feel like it's a ship that you really need to pimp out a bit to get the full effectiveness out of it. And in this case, I'm running a generic Tech 2 fit. I, d I do think the Hawk is probably better than the Vengeance in almost every single way. Uh, <laughs> the only thing that I think the Vengeance is a little better at is engageability. But even then, like I, I kind of feel like a lot more people respect the Vengeance than the Hawk even in some cases. So the fit that I'm running is uh, four Rocket Launcher 2s in the high slots. The uh, Vengeance does not get a opt uh, an optimal range bonus or a, a missile velocity bonus like the Hawk does. So you have less range than a Hawk. You have 8.4km uh, range. I then have a small Tech 2 Nosferatu to drain cap and to keep myself stable. Uh, with the Nosferatu running and thanks to the cap recharge bonus as well as the Vengeance having... Uh, naturally high cap uh, it's almost actually cap stable if you look here like you can run everything on here uh, for nearly two minutes and as long as you're uh, as long as you're sucking uh, cap from someone it's actually cap stable with a lot of uh, capacity to spare i mean if you're not getting anything from the nos i mean it's still only min uh, minus 1.7 which is really good so, i mean you can just like drop the web or something for a while if you have to so you can keep the rep running almost constantly on this and this is an area where I feel like um, pimping out the Vengeance is a good idea. You could uh, swap this small ancillary out for an A-type rep if you wanted to, because you can almost always run that A-type rep. Unfortunately, I think you do need to get off something around 16 or 17 cycles on an A-type rep for it to start tr out trading a small ancillary. It might not be quite that much. I know it's 21 for Tech 2. It's something that I might actually uh, look into again at some point, because I've done the maths for Tech 2 versus small ancillary, and you need to... Get 21 cycles off on a small tech 2 rep for it to out trade a small ancillary and obviously that's never going to happen in a realistic frigate fight but de uh, dead space reps would be a good comparison i think uh, to, to compare i think i might post that in the video once i'm done making this but anyway the mids are pretty standard i'm running the restrained micro warp drive here to uh, have the least cap penalty so then that way uh, that kind of like stacks with my uh, cap recharge rate bonus a little bit. I mean, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Also, the uh, lower cap amount is also quite nice when you're, uh, you know, MWDing around to the gate. You only have a 120 meter SIG, which is about a cruiser when running MWD. We're also going to set, uh, just over 2.1k a second, almost 2.2k, which is about the same speed as a Hawk. And then just Tech 2 Scram and a web. If you wanted to get a bit more tank out of this, so what you could do is you could um, go over Compact to my co op drive here and then a uh, Faint Scram. And then you can run a Tech 2 damage control here for the, you know, slightly better resistances for, for armor and structure. If you wanted a bit more tank, I'm running a Refuge Adaptive Nanoplating here. It's, uh, again, it's better than Tech 2 because it costs less pace to repair and it gives the same stats. Uh, you can pimp this out if you want. Um, faction, like Dark Blood, Adapted Nanoplatings, etc. About 7 mil. And you could also go for like a C-type to B-type A-type plating here if you really want to pimp this. Uh, I'm running a Tech 2 BCU for DPS. DPS is probably one of the areas where the Vengeance is lacking the most. I don't think it's that punishing though compared to other ships. Especially given you do have 8 kilometer range on your missiles. And then just running a small ancillary because I'm keeping the the uh, fit cheap. But again, this this is a ship where you know if you fit an A-type rep here, it's definitely one of those ships where you do get a lot of bang for your buck if you're willing to pimp it out a bit more. And I'm just running a, uh, a small Tech Two uh, bay loading accelerator for even more DPS. Uh, the Vengeance actually um, goes through rockets really fast because it has a rate of fire bonus on the uh, Amar frigate bonus. So you might also consider a uh, the Califraction Catalyst, uh, which is the missile damage, is the missile rate of fire one if you wanted to. It's slightly less DPS, but you would uh, not have to reload as soon. I I've noticed in some fights that I'm actually having to reload, which kind of sucks. So you might want to consider just going raw damage. And then I'm just going a uh, Tech 2, a small anti-thermal pump. That brings my uh, thermal resist, which is otherwise the lowest resist, 
up to you know really good standard so the vengeance here it has really solid resist these actually work pretty well if you have logistics as like really heavy tacklers or you know just if you want to do like some kind of fun uh, fleet where you swap this out for like a small remote rep or something and you just remote rep each other like it's really fun for those kind of things it has really solid resistances across the board you can you can feel free to uh, ditch this though and go for a, uh, a small orcs pump too if you want small auxiliary armor pump to increase rep amount a bit more that makes it slightly better if you're taking kinetic em or uh, explosive damage although thermal damage i think is quite common in the meta right now because uh, rail guns steal them oh sorry hybrid weapons energy turrets steal them i mean hobgoblin 2s are quite rare but they're probably the third most used uh, drone you'll see them a bit and also i guess thermal from missiles is pretty common so i i don't know i think thermal are pretty common in the meta game so uh, i think it's uh, okay to go with the tech two small anti-thermal pump it's also just nice to have you know your lowest resist is 72 percent em not a lot of people actually know that this is your lowest resist which is really cool I'm um, just going over the bonuses again really quickly. Um, it gets a 5% bonus to rocket damage. This is rocket damage only. It does not apply to light missiles, which is kind of uh, strange because the Kadari bonus does apply to light missiles. Uh, the Hawk gets a 10% damage bonus. This only gets a 5%, but the Hawk is kinetic locked with its with its 10% bonus, whereas this one is 5%, but it's to every rocket type. So you have a bit more flexibility in choosing damage types than the Hawk, but the Hawk does more damage overall if it can use uh, kinetic damage effectively. And uh, on the Assault Frigates, you have the 4% to all armor resistances. This is what makes this, you know, so tanky. You're getting that 20% extra armor resistances, and then also the cap recharge rate bonus on top of that. 25% cap recharge rate basically means it increases the amount of cap per second you get by 33%. Which is uh, quite nice. And that's also what makes it, you know, really stable. Even if you can't run the NOS on someone, you're almost uh, completely cap stable. And if you can run the NOS on someone and you're not using the micro orb drive, you are cap stable. And also another trick, if you are in like a really intense fight, um, assuming you can't NOS the other guy, what you can do is you can offline your MWD. And with your MWD offline, you can see here, it's actually cap stable. Uh, with 0 0.61 cap per second remaining so you're actually 100 percent cap stable even if you can't drain from the other guy if you offline the mwd if you're in like an intense fight or something like that it's so maybe a trick you might want to consider if you're if you know you're like scrammed and webbed just offline that just to get the better cap stability going but yeah, as I mentioned, I think the Vengeance is a, a bit weaker than the Hawk. It doesn't have the same amount of burst tank as the Hawk does. Although you don't have to rely on carrying uh, cap booster charges around as much. But cap, uh, Navy cap 50s aren't actually that big or annoying to carry around really. And the Hawk actually has a massive 300 meters cubed uh, cargo hold. So, you know, ammo capacity isn't really a thing. Unless you're just trying to be really frugal on the fit and not carry like a massive amount of cap boosters around. But they're not that expensive, so it's not a huge deal. The, the Vengeance is uh, slower than the Hawk. It has uh, less agility and less speed. And it's also easier to jam than the Hawk too. So this, this ship is worse than the Hawk in almost every way. I think there is kind of like a middle ground point. Where the Vengeance, uh, if you spend maybe 100 million isk on the Vengeance, it maybe starts getting better than the Hawk, but then the Hawk gets better than the Vengeance if you spend like 200 mil on the Hawk. Like, it's kind of like this weird thing going on. But just comparing uh, Tech 2 fits, I think the Hawk outshines this fit. But the Vengeance is still pretty decent. I mean, I would put it probably around the same area as the Ishka and the Jaguar. It, I think it's maybe slightly better than the Ishka, in my opinion. The Ishka that I was flying, I think this fits probably slightly stronger than that. The only problem is that you kind of get screwed if you fight someone with an afterburner fit or dual prop fit. Unlike the Ishka, which doesn't have that problem. But you do have more flexibility with damage types. And I think just better tank overall than the Ishka, so... You know, it's a solid uh, tier 2 assault frigate in my opinion. It's definitely still fun to fly, but I, you know, I personally prefer flying the NU Harpy and Hawk and the Wolf over this. I think it's definitely middle of the road though, definitely still worth flying if you want to fly a uh, armor tanking rocket brawler. It's fun to fly, but you know, the Hawk has more options as I mentioned with the extra range, with the extra damage, with the extra burst tank. Uh, fl fly the Hawk if you can fly 
both the Vengeance and the Hawk, but, you know, it's still a, a fun ship to fly. So, you know, check out the clips. And I hope you, uh, you know, enjoy flying this. Uh, so in this first fight, I was screwing around for a bit in the a bell as like annoying a raw call. I forced him to withdraw his excavator drones. Then I noticed the confessor came into the system and he was on scan at the sun, so I walked to the sun to uh, check him out and fight him. Uh, the most popular confessor fits right now in the meta game is probably the nano uh, beam kite fit, but there are still some brawling style fits in the meta. I know this guy has a MWD because I think I saw him around earlier. He is actually small focus pulse, so he's more of a brawling style confessor, and he has a scram. Uh, so right now I'm just trying to get on top of him and orbit him at 500. He doesn't actually have a web, so he's NWD injector scram, most likely. Uh, that's what's going through my head, and what I want to do is just get on top of this guy, so that way he uh, has issues tracking me. At the very least, I can deny him from uh, using conflagration on me. He actually has a conflagration loaded right now, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can kind of see from the green tint. A lot of his uh, DPS is missing me. You can still uh, he's tanking quite well. He is a dual rep fit. Dual uh, this is a dual rep confessor, so it's pretty hard to break, especially when I'm low on heat. Uh, I only do about 210 DPS cold, so it's right kind of on the edge of what he can tank with his dual rep fit. But I am able to slowly punch through it. And you can see here, it was a pretty close fight. I think if he had Imperial Navy uh, multi-frequency loaded instead of conflagration, he probably would have killed me in this fight. So, you know, it's a pretty hard fight taking on a Brawling Confessor, so I would maybe avoid it. Uh, unless you want to try it. But a lot of confessor Confessors are uh, like more long-range focused rather than Brawling focused like this one. So I'd definitely recommend uh, you try it if you're feeling confident. So in this next fight, it's an arranged 1v1 with another Vengeance. This guy wanted to 1v1 me and his Vengeance, so I decided to go for it. I'm not quite sure what the optimal play is in a mirror matchup like this, because we're both kind of in very similar fits, although his fit is a bit more speed-focused than mine. Um, you can't actually see uh, his base speed, unfortunately, because he's not on my overview, because he's in my fleet. But he did actually have a uh, like a polycarbon rig. So he's a bit faster than me. I think my game plan here, I think, is I just brawl in at close range and hope that my fit's better than his. I'm not really sure on what the optimal play is. I think you could, like, maybe min-max the situation a little. Like, if you, uh, maybe if you load, like, um, javelins or, like, CN and try to start the fight at 10 kilometers. Like, if you had, like, CN loaded and you caught the guy at 10k and then you were able to sort of stop him from using rage on you while you were just beating him up a bit with CN like you, that could potentially turn the fight he died actually quite quickly and I was really slow with my uh, rep 2 in the fight so you know I, w I wasn't great but his fit was a lot more uh, a lot more sort of um, you know like speed focused than mine uh, props to that guy for the fight but yeah, th there are maybe some sneaky things that you can do to outplay another Vengeance, you know, to play around with the like different range missiles and such. Because this is kind of like a, a medley of kills. I just want to kind of just show you sort of like how these fights start and such. So I just killed that Vengeance from the earlier fight. These guys were camping me. They had some cloaky like Stratios Lokis around for a while, but then they kind of left. I think they got bored. Then there was a like, Trap Fit Scorpion on the gate. Uh, the Hawk follows me around. I was trying to bait the Hawk to follow me to a few planets in the other system away from the Scorpion, but he didn't seem too interested. But he does seem quite interested to fire on this side of the gate. Now, obviously, against the Hawk, I want to brawl him as close as possible. I really need cap, and as well, I need cap more than he does, and I want to try and drain his cap too because that kind of hurts him a little. And obviously, the Hawk has the uh, range bonus, so I want to be on top of him. So that I can use Rage Missiles. I do not want to get kited at 9k. Which is a thing that a Hawk would pro should probably try and do to me. Unfortunately this Hawk actually ends up being a Light Missile Hawk. So he doesn't really have much of a chance when he gets caught straight away like this. He has a Scram too for some reason. And a Sensor Booster. So you know it wasn't the kind of best fit. So I'm able to sort of just work on this uh, Hawk. I have him in a bad position. I can pretty much permatank him. He's also using qu quite... He has to use Scourge on me. I think Scourge is still a better damage type. But I have 79% kinetic resistance. Whereas, you know, I mean, he could reload to EM and hit me on the 72%. But then he's not getting the 50% damage bonus. 
So, you know, that's one of the reasons where the, the hawk is kind of inflexible when it kind of hurts him. That he has to shoot me into, like, really high resists. Now I kind of just burn away on this gate because the scorpion pilot just came into local. The scorpion guy from before. I know he's in, like, some weird, like, trap fit for frigates. He has, like, ECM and then, you know, like, a scram and a grappler or something. Probably, like, drones and heavy missiles. So I start burning away towards this uh, asteroid. Here, just to, you know, warp out. I assume he's just going to try and blink on me or put drones on me or something. And a Crusader decloaks, which is, uh, you know, quite interesting. Um, I do not want to get tackled by this Crusader on, on the gate right here with the Scorpion. Because that would be, you know, a really terrible situation. The Scorpion does actually fail his jam, but I'm not sure if he's baiting me or not. But I warp to the bell and I'm um, just going to wait here to see what the Crusader does. If the Crusader lands on me at zero... I can probably kill him. I am, uh, I do have three of my charges missing from the incendiary though, and I uh, do have some armor HP missing, and I do have some heat on my module, so I'm not in perfect shape. But you know, I should be able to out brawl an interceptor in this quite easily, and he does actually end up following me to zero, so I'm able to uh, take down this uh, Crusader here, get the scram and web on him, and he doesn't really have much of a chance. This guy did actually have like a double heat sink fit though, so he does actually end up doing quite a lot of damage, but. I mean, a, a, a Crusader's not going to be able to outbrawl a Vengeance, so he, he gets a uh, rip. Uh, I try to pod him, but he warps off. And then a, another dude actually ends up coming into the belt pretty soon here. So I, I loot this dude. And, you know, I just try to, I just go to like a random horrible ping. And Atron actually comes in. I was actually debating whether or not I should stay to fight this Atron. The local did actually go up by three, and I don't. Ha and I'm reloading my ancillary, and like I've got heat damage and everything, so I kind of opt to go back to the ping and just you know check things out. And the scorpion's there. I want to check check what the scorpion is doing too to see you know has he burnt out to the edge of the bubbles? Like is he like ready and around? And now there's also a caracal around too, which is bad news. I think the caracal actually warped to the belt. And the Atron follows me back to this gate. So what I what I want to do maybe is try and bait the uh, Atron to a belt. Um, I actually go back to the belt that I was previously in, which I guess is a mistake because I don't actually descan it. So I'm thinking, you know, if I walk back to that belt, um, the Atron is going to follow me again, and you know maybe I can kill the Atron. Uh, I I I I'm kind of dumb by doing this though because the Caracal is obviously there, or oh, because he came on one of you, he's not on the gate and. Like local went up, so he's there. And there's also a Stratios in the belt now at this point, and uh, another dude shows up pretty soon. So I just bounce again. But yeah, that that was the end of that fight. I guess that kind of just shows you like how things just escalate randomly in Horde space, and just get like a few different fights uh, after another. And finally, to uh, end the fight, or to end the video rather, I've got a fight with a harpy. Uh, this is actually my harpy fit, which is kind of interesting. It's kind of uh, strange when your own fits kind of find their way into the meta game, uh, like using your fits exactly. So I reapproach this gate here. I don't, I don't think the harpy's with the maldiction, and the maldiction runs away. So I reload Mjolnir here, obviously, because to shoot EM at Tech Two Kodari. What I want to do is kite this guy at like 7k or so, so where I can use rage missiles on him, but I can force the harpy to have to uh, load null and shoot me with null. So right now this is like in a really good position for me. Uh, my rage missiles are actually expiring before they hit him, and but I forced him to reload to null. So he just reloaded to null here, and I'm just like holding him in at 7k. Like, the harpy still does a lot of DPS uh, with null. You can see that he's still, you know, even though he has null loaded, he's still putting quite a bit of pressure on my tank. And he's still actually breaking me with uh, null at 7k. The harpy just does a lot of DPS. It's such a good ship. But I am uh, able to uh, take him down at range. Uh, but it's still pretty close. Uh, and uh, you know the vengeance does have that advantage. You know rockets are really flexible. You do have, you are able to you know, scram kite out some of the other assault frigates. Uh, you do have more flexibility than the Ishka in damage choice with about the same damage, with better, t with slightly better tank. But you don't have the sort of flexibility of drones and turrets in terms of uh, you're a lot weaker to afterburner fits like dual prop fits because you won't apply to them with rage missiles.
and also there is that sort of area of sort of like 8 to 10k in like tech 2 scram he did scram range where you can get kited outside range rage missile so there is that room to get outplayed but yeah the, the vengeance is a great ship i had a lot of fun flying it it's definitely a pretty decent ship i do think the hawk is better than it if you can fly the hawk uh i recommend uh, it's probably better with you know tech 2 fit with uh, a bit of pimp i think the vengeance is probably better than the hawk and if you're going all out then the hawk is probably better than the vengeance again but yeah, fun ship to fly. Hope you liked this video. And it's just the retribution left now. Oh boy, the worst assault frigate in the game. I'm not looking forward to making that video.